and I couldn't believe my ears or my eyes. The sounds she made were extraordinary, and she looked extraordinary too, and I mean that in the nicest possible way. She was an original, a rarity in the pop world where so many performers look and sound much the same. There have been imitators since, but there's only one, Kate Bush. Ladies and gentlemen, Kate Bush. I always find watching you sing, because you do more than listen to you, you watch very much as well when you're performing. I always find, I feel like a, a mouse confronted with a cobra because there's something hypnotic about it. It's very strange. Can you explain it? It, it, it? It's some sort of curious lilt you get into your voice, which is almost like an incantation. Where did it come from? <laughs> well, this is the obvious one, isn't it? Um, I don't know. It's very strange because uh, I think a lot of influences have been responsible for the way I am. I think that's the same with everyone, really that uh, you are in many ways the things that you like and you try to be those things that you like. And I've always been incredibly fond of music. Um, I've always tried to aspire to the people that I admire. And the same with dancing. I've always had a, a basic interest in it. I think mainly because of the expression that you can get, you know, through mm. singing and dancing. But was there anything... I mean, it's such an unusual style. I think it's what's so extraordinary. It, it, so many pop singers do sound the same, but you sound absolutely different from all this. Now, what, uh, what possible influence... Because you didn't have a very unusual childhood, did you? No, no, not particularly. Where no. did you live, for example? What, uh, I was brought up in Kent, mm. um, a very sort of normal upbringing. Um, I think the music, again, that I was hearing at a very early age, um, influenced me tremendously because uh, before I was going to school, before I was reading, I was singing along to, to songs, to traditional music, and in a way I think that got my soul before the education even got near me. Mm. And I think really, when you are that young, in a way I think the sparks of what you really want to do are there somewhere. Oh, but the, the voice, where, where, were you singing like that then, this strange voice that rises up so high? No, I, when I first started singing I had an incredibly plain voice. I mean, I could sing in tune, but that was about mm. it. I mean, mm. I really wasn't that good. Um, and really all I did was uh, sing every day because I was writing songs, I would sing them. And I was concentrating much more on my writing and therefore my voice came through that. And every day I'd be at the piano for hours, so um, really it was just a gradual progression from something that started. Do you, do you like your own voice? No, I don't. And I think this is a problem that an awful lot of artists have. They can't actually um, enjoy what they do or their voice or whatever it is to the fullest because they are themselves. Mm. Um, it's very painful for me to listen to my voice sometimes, as it is for other people who don't like it. But um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's something that you just, you have to try and accept that you have limitations and that's, that's what you go for. You have some very exotic body language too. Where did that come from? Did you we have special training for that? Um, yes, I did train. Um, but uh, when I left school, uh, I knew that I wanted to do music. Mm. Um, but I also knew that there was something missing from the expression. And I was very lucky just to see an ad uh, in a paper. Uh, I went to see a, a show, and it was Lindsay Kemp. And mm -hmm. uh, really, I'd never seen anything like it before. And what he was doing was he was using movement without any sound at all something I'd never experienced. And he was expressing so much, probably more than most people would express with their mouths. And it suddenly dawned on me that there was a whole new world of expression that I hadn't even realized. And you so still do a lot of mind? 
Uh, yes, I try to, yes. You still train at it, do you? It's very hard to get the time. That's the main problem, because I find I'm in the studio or writing most of the time. So fitting everything in is, in fact, the biggest problem. And it's very frustrating sometimes, because uh, there are so many things that you want to do, but because of limitations, you just can't mm. fit it all in. Yeah, talking about fitting everything, you've got a reputation of doing absolutely everything for your shows. How many jobs do you do when you go on the road with your show? Well, I think I try to do everything that I think I can handle. And uh, because I'm writing the music and singing and performing, um, a lot of things come from that, which I don't think would otherwise. Uh, for instance, I don't think I'd be able to choreograph if I didn't write the music. Mm -hmm. Because in many ways, I, I know the music so um, inside out, I know it backwards mm. sometimes, um, that I already have ideas for steps and chore uh, choreography that I wouldn't have otherwise. Mm. Um, and, and in many ways, it just goes from the song. The song just takes off, and the video needs to be made, and then a stage show. So it's like um, the development of the songs in many ways. It seems like a natural procedure. But you, you're your own producer, I think, aren't you? You produce it all yourself, the whole thing. Yes, I've only just managed to, to get there, though. I mean, this album is the first one that I'm producing. Yeah. And it's incredible. I mean, there really is so much you have to do, and it is very hard. Hard it, work, is it? Yes, especially also, you know, when, when you're the artist that you're doing the album of. I mean, sometimes I keep thinking, whose album is this, you know? <laughs> then I think it's mine, yeah. and I think, well, you know, I've got to keep working. I, I think I wouldn't be able to if I didn't uh, feel that the songs need to be uh, presented to people. The strange thing about you is that you introduced a very original style. It didn't grow, na it grow slowly. It was there, boom, the first time I saw you, I said it in 1978, there it was. Uh, how do you see it developing? Well, I, I see it developing especially on the stage. Mm. Um, I think that's where I found something. Uh, when I did the tour, I'd never realised how much you can, in fact, do on mm. a live stage. Mm. Um, I think there's a lot that's used in video and film that has never really been explored in a live sense. And I think there's a lot that you could do there mm. that I, I would like to try and do, yes. Apart from yourself, where do you think pop music is going at the moment? I sometimes get the feeling that apart from individualistic performers like yourself, a lot of it is beginning to sound, maybe I'm getting old, but it sounds all the same to me now, a lot of it, on Top of the Pops. I have that problem too. You I, do? I watch Top of the Pops, you know, some weeks, and I really find it very, very hard to identify with some of the music that people are making. And yet, obviously, the young people of today really do enjoy it. Um, yes, but... I think it's so marvellous that we have in this country produced another original performer, one of the most unusual uh, singers I've ever heard, and I, always, I certainly, unlike you, I enjoy your voice very much indeed. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Kate Bush. Thank you.